another episode of Science Uncovered. This week's question is, why do things fly? For centuries, humans have been trying to fly just like the birds. Early efforts saw people strapping bird-like wings onto their arms, but this often resulted in disaster. Through the years, many different flying contraptions have been invented, such as hot air balloons, airships, gliders and, of course, aeroplanes. As you can see, our paper aeroplanes didn't fly very well. That's because anything that flies has to be carefully designed so that the right amount of various forces interact to keep it up in the air. In a hot air balloon, the forces acting are lift and weight. When the air in the balloon is heated by the burner, it expands and becomes less heavy so it moves upwards, providing the lift. The weight comes from the pull of gravity on the basket. Oh, well, that comes from Archimedes. Do you remember the story about Archimedes in the bath? And he, just, he realised that when you put something in water, it gets a force upwards on it, which is equal to the weight of the water that you've displaced. And the same thing is true in air. If you put an object in air, then it receives a force upwards, which is equal to the weight of the air. Now, normally, if you put a balloon in air, the balloon itself is filled with air, so it's still heavier than, than what it's displaced, so it would sink. But if you make the air hot, it expands, and it's got a lower density, so there's less weight inside that volume. And so the weight acting down is smaller than the, the force acting upwards, and so the balloon floats. The same principle can be seen in airships. An airship is a large envelope filled with helium, which is less dense than air. Therefore, it rises. For flying contraptions like gliders and aeroplanes, it's all about the wings. If you look carefully at an aeroplane wing or an airfoil, you will see that the top is more curved than the bottom. This causes the air to travel faster over the top of the airfoil than underneath it, meaning there is lower air pressure above the airfoil than below it. This creates lift. Well, an aeroplane, unlike a balloon, is just too heavy to be supported by the buoyancy of the air. So it needs some other way of staying up. So what it has to do is it has to create a, an upwards force by pushing air downwards. So when you push air in one direction, that pushes back on you in the other direction. So what I've done here is I've drawn a cross section through an aeroplane wing. And the air rushes along like this and around both sides of the, of the wing and then ends up moving downwards at the other end. So it comes in horizontally, but it gets thrown downwards. And because it's being thrown downwards, that creates a force upwards on the wing, which lifts the aeroplane. As aeroplanes move through the air, the air pushes against the aircraft, causing a force known as drag. To make the plane travel, the turbine engines create a forward moving force, known as thrust, to counteract the drag. When the aircraft is travelling at a constant speed in the air, Lift equals weight, and drag equals thrust. Well, it's the same principle as when the aeroplane flies the right way up. But it, normally, if you turn an aeroplane wing upside down, it will force the inflowing air upwards and push the aeroplane down. But if you tilt the angle of the wing slightly, 
so that the nose is higher than the tail, then the air that's coming in still gets pushed down towards the ground. And so that creates an upward force that keeps the aeroplane in the air. So to make a really good paper aeroplane, you'd need to design the wings carefully so that they were the right shape. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to tweet us your questions or post them on our Facebook wall.